a lot of the feedback. I'm going to try to bring that up tonight. And I've asked my uh, coworkers to interrupt me and remind me if I forget something. So you guys definitely feel free to uh, to um, to jump in if I'm, I'm skipping over something here. Um, so uh, what we're contemplating creating on on this site, which is just under five acres, is a community of detached single-family homes. And uh, this is always what we had in mind, um, though we do tend to get questions, is it something else? So it's nothing to do with the prior applicant, nothing to do with schools or condominiums or government subsidies or rentals or condominiums or anything of that sort. It's, it's um, detached single-family homes. They'll be for sale, it'll be market rate, meaning that they'll, they'll get sold for you know, whatever you know, the price is of, of the market at that time. So um, right now, um, the land's vacant, but it did have you know, a number of different uses, including commercial and multifamily and single family over the years. And um, we got some pictures just trying to show a little bit what the site looks like. So, um, says, you know, basically where, where this is from, and you kind of see how the site looks. You know, today, on Lombardi, there was this area where there was a commercial um, project, a uh, uh, building there in the past that had long since been demoed. And um, this is on the site looking uh, south, and um, one, of the, one of the things that came up in a, in a prior meeting was, was concern about driveways and access. And um, there are currently two driveways on the site. And one of them, this, this photo is it's actually our proposed site plan, um, superimposed over photos from uh, Google Earth. And there's an existing driveway here along the southern boundary. And there's also driveway about right here. And, and the driveway, when you go in it now, it's fenced, but you could go up to the top there or follow it around to this area. And one of the things we heard people you know, were concerned about safety and cars coming in and out of the site. And so we um, listened to that. We you know, kind of challenged the engineer and the thinking, how could we improve the situation? So now we've done the site plan to eliminate the driveway that was here in favor of having a single driveway entrance here for, for the site. And that way, the concerns that you know, people have expressed about two you know, driveways you know, this distance apart have been eliminated. Another thing that, that we did was um, changed from having a combination of three-story and two-story homes to all two-story. And we originally plotted three-story People had expressed concern, and so we kind of went back to the drawing board and thought about it, can we still do this as all two-story? And we can. And so this site plan is showing now all two-story homes. So those are a couple of examples of trying to listen and see what we can do to um, you know, hear you know, people who are residents, what, what, what concerns you have, and how can we uh, improve the project. And the uh, color coding of the homes on the site plan indicate the ones that are in light uh, blue there, and like those are two story non gray. The ones that are purple are built down slope. So uh, you know, one floor of the garage is built down the slope. And the ones that are in the light gray are built up the slope, so two stories up the slope. So it provides it. You're working with the natural uh, frame. Another thing, that this was present before, but in some original discussions, again, safety was a, was a question. And even though, well, it's not really shown in this picture too well here, but you can tell, you know, looking at houses here on Lombardi that most of the houses as, are, as they are have driveways in the front. And so the residents would um, back out of their driveway, you know, into the street and, and come out. So that's pretty much the way all these houses work. And then same thing farther down on, on the east end. And so what we did in this case here is we pulled the homes away from the street 
so that the cars come in here and park. These little subset squares that have elongated triangles are our potential indication for a car heading. So each home has its own parking. And then this covered parking. Yeah. Yes, it, it, yeah, exactly. It's, it's two car garage, side by side parked, you know, inside the uh, the structure of the home. And then this notch out here is for guest parking, and there's a number of other areas um, that, that we have for guest parking internal to the site. So there's an area where you see the cars would come in here and not back out onto the street. And then similarly over here, it's, it's kind of a similar effect, but just handled differently. These ones are set back farther from the street, and we have a, an internal driveway here, so that there's only one curb cut coming from these six homes to Lombardi Street or Boulevard right here. So people would drive in and go into their uh, garages, and then when they go to leave, they would back out and then come their head out, either make a right or a left. Right only? Only to right. Oh, okay. Right turn only. Yeah. And this is also right turn only. Uh, so it's all right in, right out. And there will be signs and post posts. And signs and posts. Um, the, the streets are um, ultimately going to be private roads built to you know, the city standards. And the maintenance of the streets, the maintenance of the overall site, the landscaping and things, are all going to be um, managed by a maintenance association, which is always like a homeowner's association. So that'll have conditions, restrictions, and all that sort of stuff. And so the whole site will have a clean and you know well kept look to it. The system is maintained as well. So exactly. the individual homeowners. Another complaint we heard was there's this little triangular strip of land that exists today and it's owned by the city and it's on the outside of the existing sidewalk between the sidewalk and the street. And that is, uh, in essence, public land and there's nothing planted there, it's just dirt. <clears throat> so we've been informed by a lot of people that a taco vendor truck comes up, parks, sells food, and then a lot of trash gets left on the site and is blown around, it's a big mess. And so we um, were asked about this, and so what we've essentially volunteered and agreed to do is we're going to, um, even though we don't own it, it'll still, still be city property, we're going to put irrigation in, and we're going to plant it, and it's going to be with some kind of shrubs and things where no one can drive a vehicle, so there's no more vendors setting up shop <laughs> on this area. And the cost of maintenance and water will be borne by the residents who choose to live here. So it wouldn't be a cost, but it'll be yet yeah, another way of beautification and things. Yeah. It also provides an opportunity for some kind of signage to create for the community where we don't really have a name yet, but we're uh, thinking about it. You know, there's a lot of historical significance in Serino, but there's a possibility of creating some kind of you know, signage that you know speaks to you know this part of, of LA. Uh, another thing we've, we've been asked about is um, open space, and so we have you know created a, uh, an, an open space pad area um, right here that'll be accessible from the street, and also these paths are in you know, different parts of the community are just showing the connectivity between each of the different planning areas. As we look at it, there's you know, one, two, three, and four. And so there's you know some open space there, along with you know a lot of open space that exists around the site, which has natural vegetation and trees, and then we'll be planting more, and probably it'll be native uh, types of trees, and also low water consumption. Well, one thing about the, I don't know, it's hard to answer this, but like the stairs coming out of the east and there, people have an opportunity to take the stairs down, down next to here. That staircase then, you can take the staircase all the way up to the top pad as opposed to navigating on the driveway. So they want to keep pedestrians 
and automobiles away from each other while they're possible. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, we'll just move over on that one. Um, it's all been updated since then. The, um, the well, this is kind of a profile kind of showing the offset of the houses along this. Okay. It just shows the offset of the houses. This is a section of the site map showing from the homes on Klamath Street. So on the right side of the... Uh, this would be an example of a home that's along Klamath Street right now <coughs> in the back of their home. This is the property line. It just shows the offset of how far the structure of the homes would be conceptually from the individual house. So in this situation here, you've got 36 and 38. So you've got uh, you know, 74 feet between the houses and 38 from the property line. So it shows the distance that's being created between the uh, individual houses. So as we, you know, as Dan said, this, we're still developing things, and, but as we, as we finalize the uh, concepts, and come back uh, to the land use committee. We'll have all of those kind of details, you know, worked out and presented in a fashion that's easy to follow and understand. One thing is, we um, I thought you were really also getting to lot sizes, okay. but um, one one of the things is um, right now, and, and the things are still moving around a little bit, but the average lot size is about 5,000 square feet. The minimum lot size is about 3,000 square feet, and the largest lot size is about. 85, about 8,500 feet. All I can tell you right now is those numbers are going to shift a little bit, but that's just giving you kind of a range of, of an indication of, you know, the, the um, individual lot sizes and, and the average. So here's a picture, and these are not our homes, okay? It's just a, a, a photo of homes. It's more like a massing kind of exercise. So we asked our architect to just you know, show us something that would be approximately the same size, you know, in terms of width and height. And so, again, these were product that they had that they designed for another community elsewhere, but it just kind of gives an indication of, of two-story homes that are approximately 2,000 square feet, you know, a two-car garage, you know, an entrance. Uh, it's not, again, it's not our architecture. We haven't started working on architecture because the land planning part is kind of complicated. And we're trying to still work through all the engineering and such. So it just kind of gives an idea of massing. There's another house um, that uh, exists. It, it was something that was designed. It's, it's um, conceptual you know, in terms of what we're talking about. But this is a type of a house. And again, this, this is not our style architecture, but there's no garage on the front of the house. It, it's accessed from the other side. So it's kind of like, if you remember on the site plan I was talking about along Eastern, where you see the front of the house, but not garage doors, but when you drive in and around the other side, that might be the garage door side. I think that's the last slide. Yeah. So, um, already, but, you know, um, when, when we go to develop a site, we're conditioned, uh, amongst other things, to pay fees. And a lot of these fees go to different agencies, one of which is parks. So LA Parks and Recreation would, would get a fee. It's called the Quimby fee. And um, the fee for this city, for the city of LA, is, I think, $3,000 per unit. So if we do 43 homes times 3000 it's $129,000. And it occurred to us that, um, you know, in all these years that we've been developing homes, we've paid these fees, and I can't think of one time where something ever got built with the fees that we um, had paid in, except for much larger communities that we actually built the park. So here, um, we talked to the council member, and um, he looked into the research and got back to us and confirmed that, that he can do what we've requested, which is take the fees that we're going to pay, earmark them for uh, capital improvement to the El Serena Regional Park. 
real time, when this project is approved and building, we'll have this $129,000 to build something at the park. And so, it's something that I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to you know, figure out what it's going to be, get some input, maybe it'll be a committee or something. I don't know really what it is, but it could be a lot of possible things. I mean, maybe shade structure with picnic tables or barbecues, or a, a, a play structure, or you know, something. Big bathrooms are another thing that's probably out there because I've seen there's all the row of temperature appointments that are out there. So maybe that's the improvement. And so that's one thing that um, we're really excited about and um, I'm really happy that the councilman embraced the idea and that it's something that can be done and, and, and will be done and he's assured us that this can happen. And I double, triple check with him and his staff that we don't want to be talking about it and then find out it's can't make it happen. But he, one minute. Okay. So, um, oh yeah. Um, I've had multiple meetings with the principals of, of the middle school and elementary school, and one thing they brought up to us was, is there any way we can help them get a crossing guard at Lombard? And so, I, said, I don't know. Let's look into it. So we did some research, and we figured out there's a protocol and a methodology, and we made a bunch of arrangements and came back presented all this stuff to the school. The schools are now in the process of getting a crossing guard. And um, they were really thrilled that we could help them get this done. So that's something that we're really happy to, to have been able to initiate and help out. So I think that's our time. Yes. Well, thank you. OK, so thank you for that presentation, Cal. And so now we're going to move on to agenda item six, which is your time to ask any questions that you'd like answered by Clearwater. And, um, oh yes. Well, somebody filled out a comment card, but this was for this section, right? This portion? Yeah, I went ahead and put your card, so I'm going to go ahead and take, yeah. Take, I think what we'll do is we'll just go row by row first. So, does anybody have a question here? And if you do, then I'll start from that end, and you can go, go ahead and ask your have a lovely plan and you've got a lot of open space, which is nice. Um, what's to say you don't know, take that plan and get all your approvals and then say we're changing it to something else? We're going to put a condos on that side and leave the houses there and, you know, uh, what, what's to keep you guys from changing what you put in place? Okay. Okay. Does everybody hear the question in the back? Do you understand the question? No. Okay. So, well, first of all, our plan is to build detached single family homes. It was never to do condominiums. <clears throat> so we're going through a process to, to get this plan approved. And it is a lengthy, it's complicated, <coughs> process to getting approved. And once it's approved, that's all you're approved for. So if for some reason we did that and spent, you know, whatever, a year or two and a lot, I mean, a lot of money getting it done and we wanted to change our minds, um, we'd literally be starting all over again. So there would be an entirely new process started from ground zero. All the community outreach, all the engineering, and then you'd actually have to do a much more intensive ask. What we're doing is doing a mic, well, I should probably get in zone change stuff, but it's, it, it's already zoned for detached single family. To change it to condominium ownership, which would probably get you higher density, would not only be a zone change, but a general plan amendment. And we actually wanted to do more units on more single family, 53 as a matter of fact, but that would have triggered a general plan amendment. And once we looked into it and talked to the council member's office, what was involved, it, it was you know, decided that that would just be really a problematic thing. So there's you know zero chance that we would go through this because we are so methodical and we're so careful and we're spending a lot of time and effort and this is what we do. So we're not changing our mind later. <coughs> Single family is what this calls out for. Yeah, our approval would be contingent upon whatever the final site map and lot configuration is actually the approval. That is the condition to build what's been approved. So as Dan mentioned, you start to go back to square one if you do a different map. We're going to have to speak a little louder for those that aren't hearing. Maddie, when it comes to the pier, there's some seats up here, and you can hear better. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. That, that's my question. You can say, this is what we're planning on doing, and we don't want to change it. And then you go through the process, and <clears throat> lo and behold, it changes to something else. Yeah, no. Okay. The, the request that we're asking for only, would only allow us to build single family homes based on the zoning. And that's all we could build. Because mm -hmm. it's our one zone now, right? Can we, can we go to the next, next question? Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. so are you going to be using any green building standards with this construction? And there's a lot of uh, mature trees on the site. How are you going to deal with the loss of those trees? Sure. Let me talk about green building. Okay. Um, and, uh, my name is Rick Pardo, Pardo Land Use, um, and just consultant and uh, permit expediter. When you go through building um, permits for the city of Los Angeles, any city now, uh, through state law, you, you are required to uh, go through that individual city's um, green building division. So uh, part of the plan check for a construction site requires that we go through the uh, green building division of, of building safety, and there are minimum standards that you have that you're required to um, get through to get that bunch of approved. So the permits will not be approved unless you go through that. So um, uh, as far as like, um, uh, right now the law doesn't require a sole defenses. That's just, that's, that's a beginning of the above, but that's not, you know, that's part of it. Materials and stuff like that are punch as As far as trees, Pat, no stuff. As far as we have, there will be an artwork report that's done on the overall site that's done as part of our submittal that we submit for our, you know, tentative map. At that time, they evaluate, you know, evaluate all the trees on site, and depending on what trees are impacted based on the development, the, the replanting plants that we do based on that stuff. What kind of environmental document are you guys planning on preparing? By code, we have to file what's called a environmental assessment form, and then that gets reviewed and um, uh, in order to get what's called a um, mitigated neg negative declaration. Yeah. The city is the lead agency on that, so they manage that process. Part of the fees that we pay for planning is they do that. So you're not going straight to the IRA during the year? Uh, and the city will determine uh, there's a mitigated negative, negative deck that was required on the previous submission. Next question. Uh, yeah, we're going to sign over some information from um, Well, we have a company website, but there's nothing on this. Okay. Um, I noticed you were mentioning that uh, the roads are private. Is this gated? No. No. Just one more time. Can people hear in the back? Are you hearing these questions? Look at that. Look at that. All right, so the question is, is this a gated community? No. It's not. It was never contemplated to be gated. It will be open. Though the roads will be private, so we'll pay for the cost of the roads, and the people who live here will pay for the maintenance of the roads. It will not be paid for <laughs> by, you know, taxpayer dollars. What's the square footage of the homes? Well, the homes, okay, so the square footage. We haven't designed the architecture. These has generally, or these footprints are showing 30 foot by 40 foot, which would give you approximately 2,000 square feet. If you net out, say, 400 for a garage, that's 20 by 20. So it would be in, in, in that realm. 18 to 2,000 would be the range, depending on you know, pop-outs and recessed areas, things as you develop the uh, elevation of the floor. Can, can I answer something about the gates? Yes. <laughs> uh, the DOT on a, on a project like this, yes. DOT does not allow for gates for the Department of Transportation. Because so having gates during, um, you know, when you're coming back home around 4 or 5 o'clock, it'll it possibly queue up traffic. It could possibly queue up, queue up traffic so another traffic can system flow into the property without queuing up traffic here. Here, there will be no gates allowed for DOT. Is there any estimate on how much, uh, what, how much uh, yardage would be cut and fill on this yet? Yeah? Not yet. We're still working that out right now. Balancing the paint walls and the uh, and mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, I missed the first part. Uh, I'm assuming that you're talking about individual houses now and not conference. Correct. So Single family homes. Uh, two story homes. My main concern now with all this new construction is the setback. Mm -hmm. Houses that they're building in my area are not set back far enough, and parking is very, very limited. 
So well, what's going just, to be the setback on yeah. these? Okay, so um, <coughs> the question was about setback and parking. <laughs> so we're, we're concerned about the same thing. And so these homes, which um, face eastern, will not have driveways on the eastern. Okay, so the way the cars would be, can you see my red dot right there? Yes. It's going to come in here and they're going to park in their own two car garages. And so there won't be anybody backing up. So the setback from the front of this house to the property line pad is about oh, 15 feet. It's about 15 feet. Would it be enough for a car no. to park in front of the garage? Oh, here? Mm -hmm. Any setback? Where, we any of our you? We get, there's guest parking is going to be right here. Mm -hmm. And we this fire lane, so you can't block this. You, you can't block yeah, so there's, there's six yeah, guest parking right here. Right. There's six yeah. spots right there. And that's for the whole development? No. No, just, no, no, there's, there's, there's right there. Yeah. There is, there's areas up here. I'm not sure. It's not really shown here where... What I went to the parking, but when, they, when the road goes out down there, there's three spots along and then one there. Right here. Four there, and there's individual spots up on the open pad also. So we, we'll go through and evaluate all that parking. Is there any code that mandates how much setback? Yeah. Yes, and we're following that code. Yeah. What, what is it? Fifteen feet for the front yard. A small lot or a small lot ordinance you're allowed, you're, you're allowed reductions of, of, of setbacks, but, but in, in this portion here we're actually giving more than the code allows, or what requires um, the code. The reason I ask that is there's new construction right now on my circle, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's a 15 foot setback for the road driveway.